do, so it will be on there. All right, problem set two. Problem set two, the atom. Okay, um, I'm just going to go through the answers. If you have questions that you want to talk about or go over, um, we're going to do that. Okay, so here we go. Um, 1A, the first box there, we're going to go down the, the column. Okay, so I'll just write them up here. So it gives you Na23, right? And then so you should have 11, 12, 11, and 23. 11, 12, 11, 23. Okay. The next column should be yttrium um, 89. And it should have 39.50, which was given to you, and then 39 and 89. Mm. Okay. And then the next column, 10, 1, 18. Okay, should be uh, 50, 68, 50, and 118, okay? So those would be the answers to that first table. Okay, anything you want to go over? There's another column. I know, anything you want to go over? Okay, let's go to the next table. Oh, you're right, gold. AU, 197, okay, we should have 79, 118, 79, and 197, okay? Make sure that you're, you're capable of doing these quite well, all right? Believe it or not, on the, the AP exam and the tests that I give you, I see these missed more often than they should be. It's ridiculous, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is the next table. AL 27. We have 13, 14, 13, and 27. And then we have MO 98, uh, 42, 56, 42, and 98. All right, so good so far? Yes. Um, in D, I mean, just copying this down is not going to help you. Um, it, it's it's really to your detriment. I guarantee you. Sixty, eighty-three, sixty, and one forty-three. Okay. Good. Okay. Uranium. Two thirty-eight. Um, 92, 146, 92, and 238. All right. All right. Before we go to number or to letter B, any questions on those two tables? All is well. Okay. Good. Good to know. Okay. So I'll raise those. All right, here we go. Next table. B. Okay, we're going to start with chlorine uh, Cl minus 37. So we got 17, 20, 18, and 37. Okay. Uh, then we got Na plus. 23, 11, 12, 10, and 23, okay? And then bromine negative one is 81. We have um, 35, we have 46, 36, and 81, okay, good? All right, 
And then last one, radium two plus um, two twenty six. It's a symbol. We have eighty eight. 138, 86, and 226. And then we have barium, 2 plus, 137, 56, 81, 54, and 137. Zinc, 2 plus, 64 is the mass number. 30, 34, 28, and 64. All right. And then sulfur, 2 minus, 2 minus, mass number 32, should be 16, 16, 18, and 32. Okay, and then finally, the very last one, Zirconium, four plus, 90 is the mass number. So we got 40, 50, 36, and 90. All right, any questions? Sure? Yes. Okay, number two, A, essentially you should have something along this line that atoms that have a uh, atoms that have the same number of protons, atoms that have the same number of protons, but differ number of neutrons. Okay, you can also indicate that they have a different number uh, or a different mass number. That's fine, but it should indicate different neutron or same proton number, different neutron number. Okay, isotopes. Okay, B, um, should be sodium 23. So you would write that out. So this is 2B, it should be written out as sodium hyphen 23. Okay, you do need the hyphen if you're going to name the isotope correctly. So sodium slash or hyphen 23, that would be the most abundant. Now you could use a symbol, if you go Na 23, okay. and sodium has how many 11. protons? 11, so you can put the 11 protons. So it just, it depends on what they ask you. If they write ask you for the isotopic symbol, you would definitely write this. If they ask you for the isotope name, you would have to write sodium hyphen 23. If they don't ask you either way, then it's open, right? Good. This is the symbol, the bottom one. This is the isotopic symbol. And this one is the name of the isotope. That's fine. I, I, I don't care either way right now. I just need you to understand the difference, okay? Now, the number of neutrons should be 12, right? 12 neutrons, or sodium 23, 12 neutrons, okay? So again, that's 2B, All right? Hopefully we understand that. Any questions before we move on? All right. All right, number three. Uh, number three, the answer should be 80 electrons, 80 protons, and 80 neutrons. Okay, 80 is all the way around. Anyone need help with that one? All as well? Are you sure? Okay. So 80, 80, and 80. Special, okay. 
Agile All right, number four. Uh, let's see, four A. Shoot, I missed four B. I forgot to calculate it. So four A is three point one seven times ten to the twenty four neutrons. Okay. What are we doing? But it's only two six. All right, all right. My goodness. Yeah. Picky, picky, picky. Yeah, like the best. Yeah. Like. <laughs> okay, 3.2 times 10 to the 24 neutrons. I don't know how we have a fraction of a neutron, but we do. Okay. How many neutrons? We have one quarter. Yeah, we lost the other. We, we somehow lost a quark and something like that to the 24th. Wait, what do you mean you have a fraction of a neutron? Well, this is the number of neutrons, right? Uh -huh. For A. Yeah, oh, where it says A, 4A asks you. How many neutrons are in 10 grams of fluorine 19? Yeah. All right. If you're able to get A, you should be able to get B. Okay. Uh, so, any questions on A? Going once? Okay, so you should know, and if you don't know, then it's easy to look up. One AMU is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 uh, grams, right? One atomic mass unit, big guy. One AMU, one atomic mass unit. Is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. All right, yes. Right? Okay. So if I know I have 10 grams, two significant figures, 10 grams of fluorine 19, right? So I solve this using dimension analysis where I have 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams to 1 AMU. So that will tell me the number of AMUs that I have in 10 grams of fluorine 19, okay? Right? Uh -huh. Now, but fluorine 19 has a ratio of 19 AMUs to what? To how many neutrons? So how many neutrons nine. does it have? Nine. Nine? No, nine, ten. It's ten, right? Oh, yeah. Ten neutrons. So fluorine-19 has ten neutrons to 19 AMUs, okay, as this mass number, right? Okay. So if I carry this out, knowing that I know how many AMUs I have total, I know that the fluorine 19 or fluorine 19 has a mass of 19 AMUs per fluorine 19 atoms, right? And then um, it has 10 neutrons. Okay. So I can get rid of my mass, I can get rid of the AMUs, and I have neutrons left over. Okay. See how that works with dimension analysis. That 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24, that's true for every element, right? That's just a... This one here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so... That's what the So you remember AMU, atomic mass units, AMUs, they are a man-made uh, idea to scale up a proton and neutron's mass so that they don't seem so small which they are right so if you were to they take, are not very in other words if you were to take a neutron a neutron would have a mass of roughly 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 okay 
or the mass of the proton is very similar? Uh, so when it's um, so since elect so when we talk about atomic mass units, electrons have an atomic mass unit of zero. Yeah. Right. That's because the mass of an electron is times ten to the negative twenty-nine light grams. Yeah, but like <laughs> if you have like uh oh. I don't know, a hundred thousand tons of uh, nickel, how much of that weight is made up of electrons? Doesn't it start to become significant? Um, well, it's significant. Um, you mean in the total weight of the whole thing? Yeah. Not really, but it does it does have some merit to it, but not much. Okay. When you're talking to the negative 29th power, oh my, you know. That's not that much smaller than, well, it's a lot. It's a lot smaller. It's, it's, it's two, remember the electron is 2,000 times smaller than a proton. So if you have. Okay, 2,000 times smaller. Well, if you're to the negative 29th, like a proton to the negative 24th, wouldn't that mean that a proton is 10,000 times more mass. Yeah, as far as the mass goes, 10,000. So, uh, that's the difference between the R and a very much bigger. Re really, an electron does not contribute very much to the mass of an atom. I mean, very insignificantly. Uh, but in terms of, so like the ratio, the ratio of mass of an electron to mass of a proton is different than the ratio of size of an electron to size yeah the the, the actual volume that it would occupy yeah. yeah which one is a bigger percentage like it's tiny but the, the mass the mass so the mass. okay yeah okay. the mass is quite different okay all right now i know we're trying to get our heads around size here Right, because uh, electrons and protons and neutrons themselves are so tiny, it's almost moderately. It's it's almost inconceivable how small we're talking about here. The scale size, and so in your your mind, you're trying to blow an electron up or a proton or neutron up to something that you can kind of manageably think about. Okay, which is something that's hard because electrons and protons and neutrons are insignificantly small. All right, yes or no on this? Are you sure? Okay, uh, the way the way I'm seeing right now, I'm expecting 100%. Okay, there probably will not be, by the way, a retake or corrections for this at all. Okay, it's a one-time shot on this particular exam due to the time that we have, okay? So do it right the first time, understand? Okay. All right, five. We're gonna go through this fast. I'm just gonna put up the answers, the five. Hopefully we're good to go. So the first one, uranium, should be U238, then F, 19 for fluorine, iodine should be 127. Okay, again, this is number five. And then um, polonium, 244, and zinc, um, zinc 65, right? And hydrogen one. Do we, do we have to write the proton number? Like on um, you don't have to, but you if you do, that would probably be preferred. But you know, look at it. One, one, eight. Look at that. Okay, number six, real quick, should be Mg two plus twenty four and twelve protons. You want to throw that in? Seven should be tungsten. Uh, six plus. Let's see, 74. Oh, right? yeah. 74 protons. And, oh, what's the mass number? Um, 100. The mass number should be what for Thompson? 184. Yeah, 184. 
All right. Good so far? That's if we're going by the most common uh, uh, ion isotope. All right. Um, eight. And by the way, a lot of times, if they don't really care about the isotope, they may just go magnesium two plus or tungsten six plus, not caring about the particular isotope. Okay. Now, this is important. If I gave you a question and I asked you why I could represent magnesium ions in this way versus this way and it'd be correct, what would you tell me? What would you write on the test? Oh, you say it's magnesium to attack the standard like platinum ion, cable, and all the stuff, two numbers sometimes. But that specifies the change, which is a decrease in electrons by showing that it has positive C charge. Good, that's a good start. But what about the isotopes? Why am I not representing every like mass number up here? Yeah, I guess that, no, no, so the, the, the one on the left is actually implies that it's magnetic or and, um, Well, they're both the same. Well, they're only focusing right. on the electron. No, that implies, because this is, you're, you're writing a thing for a single ion, so you're, like, saying something that this one has 12 and these cause, but it's just like in nature that it's about to have. For sure, right? Okay. Well, go back to the electrons. What are we focusing on? Oh, if you focus on the, the ions, then you can go. Why do we only need to focus on the ions and not the various isotopes of the element? Uh, isotopes don't, aren't affected by the number of electrons. Okay, that's true. The isotope is not affected by the number of electrons. Okay, here, here's the ultimate thing. We're getting there, we're not getting there. Oh, I did. Neutrons don't have charge, so it doesn't. Okay, that's true too, okay. Here's the deal. All the isotopes of that element have the same chemical reactivity. It is the electron that is responsible for the chemical reactivity of the atom or element, okay? And since all carbon atoms have the same chemical uh, reactivity in nature, we only need to represent the electron change for the atom in generic, because it applies to any isotope for that atom. Okay? <laughs> Only if they were specifically focusing on a specific isotope. So when would you do that? Why? If they asked you, hey, here, we're working with uh, magnesium 24, what would happen if magnesium 24 loses two electrons? What would it look like? Okay, then, then we might be more specific. But other than that, you can be pretty generic in the symbols, okay? All right, let's go on to number eight. Um, americium, for instance. I mean, they're not, they're not asking much. You know, americium six plus is the ionic charge, regardless of the isotope that we're, we're looking at here. It's not specified, okay? Are we good? Okay, let's jump then to nine. Uh, nine should be protons, 28, 31, and electrons, 26. Okay, 10 should be protons equals 40, neutrons is 51, and electrons is 36. Okay, and then 11, uh, protons, 58, neutrons, 82, and electrons, 49. Okay, but it, it's, a, it's a positive three cation, right? Yes, so, so it's gonna lose three yeah. electrons. Yeah, but you, have, you start with 58. Oh, you're right, 55. Why am I, where did that come from? Seven times seven. I have no idea, I have no idea where 49 came from. Now I look at that. Sorry about that. Yes, 55 electrons. We lose three electrons. 
Uh, how are we doing? Yeah. Excellent. Better, better change that on my thing here. All right. If if you don't have any questions about these ones, I'm going to move on to the last ones. Okay. Oh, all the numbers. This was kind of a dumb one. All right. So here we're going to have to draw the shell or bore model. Okay. So. Um, on the test, let me show you how you can do this really simple, okay? This is what I would expect on the exam, okay? So for instance, number 12 says, draw the shell model for question number six, okay? So the atom we're looking at on question six is magnesium, right? 24, right? Um, 12 protons. So, what I would do is determine the number of electron shells that magnesium uh, 24 uh, would normally have without being an ion, okay? Without being an ion. So you would say what, three? Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. So the, the first electron shell piece is N equals one, okay? The second electron shell is N equals two, and the third electron shell is n equals three, okay? So I'm just shortening it down so I don't show like the entire circle, okay? Because all I care about is the number of electrons that are in those electron shells. Because I will be honest with you, the electron arrangement in those shells are very complicated. They are not what your biology teachers show you or other, other uh, you know, previous science courses that you might have had. The electron is nothing like you assume it to be, okay? Your notion of what you think the electron is is not really what the electron is right now, okay? So I do not care about you you pairing electrons up here or pairing them there, whatever you want to do. I just care about the numbers. Do you understand? We'll look at the structure of this once you understand quantum theory a little bit better, okay? Oh boy. Yeah, just coming up faster than you probably want. All right, so how many protons are in the nucleus? Well, you would probably say 12. The neutron number is what? 12. 12. So on the test, I would expect something like this, where you show me the proton neutron number. Uh, you don't have to do anything fancy, just proton neutron number. And then let's go ahead and arrange the electrons. So in the first shell, you should have what? Two, Two electrons. In the third shell, or sorry, second shell, magnesium has eight electrons. And in the last shell, it would have two, okay? This would be normal neutral magnesium. But this is an ion. So what do we know that's gonna happen based on that positive two charge? We're, We're gonna lose two electrons. We lose the outer electrons first. The electrons furthest from the nucleus are going to be lost first. That is known as ionization. Okay, so we're gonna ionize these electrons first. Okay. Where do they go? Um, they're free. They're, they're actually they're free electrons. Free. Now, what they do afterwards depends on what's going on around it in the environment. And that's something we'll talk about more in uh, Unit 3, okay? Mm -hmm. So for now, this is the symbol for magnesium uh, positive 2 charge, <laughs> okay? Now, uh, 13, 13 is ridiculous. We're, we're just going to skip that because I'm never going to have you do anything like that on the AP exam. Okay? So if you want help with 13 and want to go over it independently, we'll do so. But not right now, okay? Yeah, general question. General question. Go ahead. Yeah. Plus. 
Okay. So, uh, would you put, would you take it out of the last shell? Or would you take it out of the third shell? You would take it out of the very last shell, so, so the fourth even, shell. Even though that when you, yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes. Always remove electrons from the most outer shell first. Okay. Do you understand that? That is so critical in your understanding of the chemistry. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. What are you supposed to understand? Remove from the outside first. Okay. No matter what, right? Okay. Let's skip 13 and go to 14 because 14 is more likely to be seen on the test. Okay. So we're we're looking at nickel uh, two plus, and actually this is going to answer your question right here with nickel two plus. So 59 and 28. Okay. So let's. How many sh electron shells should nickel actually have? Uh, four. Four. Agreed? Agreed. One, two, three, four. So N equals one, N equals two, N equals three, N equals four. Okay? So let's deal with the nucleus first. How many protons? No, uh, 28. 28. How many neutrons? 31. 31. 31, yeah. Okay, ah. so let's do a normal nickel atom, the electron structure. Normal nickel atom, okay? You will understand more why I'm starting with the normal and then looking at the ion afterwards, okay? Especially as we get more uh, structure of the atom, okay? So we start out with two electrons in the first shell. Eight electrons in the second shell, okay? Then we go to another eight electrons in the third shell. We jump to two electrons, and then back to nickel, we have another, what, eight? Uh, One, correct. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight plus eight is 16, right? So this is your normal nickel atom. This would be the structure of it normally. Understand, but it's an ion. So what are we gonna do? Uh, remove two. We're gonna move two electrons from where? The four. The outer shell. Number four. Right there. Those two electrons are gonna go bye bye. Okay. They're gone. All right. Now that's the answer then to number fourteen. However. Let's go one step further, okay? Now this doesn't normally typically happen in nature for nickel to do this. But let's say nickel was a positive three charge, okay? Again, it's not normal for nickel to do that. But if it was, where would the next electron come from? The third. The yeah. third yeah. electron mm -hmm. shell, very good, okay? Yes, really. It would come again from the now the most outer shell. Okay? And start going. Yes? Okay. The more you begin to understand this principle now, the better off you'll be coming down the future here. It would be 2, 8, 19, 2. What? It was plus 2. It was minus 3. It would be 2, 8, and. 16. Six, 15. If we lose another no, one. If, you, if, you if you're three. adding three. If you add three electrons. Oh, if I'm adding three. Yeah, three. Yeah. three. Okay, then it would be, uh, and then be uh, 16 and three, right? Six and five. Well, uh, uh, five, yeah, if you're adding one. So what, Do you need the empty shell in your answer? Uh, no. Yeah. You don't. All right, there we go. That is the answer to problem set two. And we're going to stick to it. If you have any further questions on any of the individual ones, uh, you can come and talk to me, okay?